please welcome Carrie Taylor. It's just going to be a tough year. Don't worry about it. It's just one year. You just need to get through it. These were the words from my farmer mentor when I asked her, how does one have a baby and manage a farm all at once? This wasn't a topic that was covered by what to expect when you're expecting. So I was desperate for advice. I had Googled farming and parenting and all I got was something about sheep. In early February, we were preparing for a snowstorm. We also had a winter share pickup the following day. That night, I woke up. Something was wrong. I was only 23 weeks, and I was having contractions. I called the hospital, talked to the doctor on duty, and they said, Maybe you're dehydrated. Drink some water. We'll see if things let up. Call us in the morning. Nothing let up. The snow was pouring down, and we got in our truck and crept along the very snowy roads. On the way, my husband and I said, yeah, we maybe should postpone this winter share pickup till tomorrow. So I got on my phone, and I wrote a bunch of emails. And um, I also hired a doula, better late than never. We got to the hospital and they immediately put me on a magnesium and muscle relaxant drip and started making plans to transfer me to a hospital with a NICU about an hour away from our farm. For some reason, we thought it was a good idea if my husband Max would head home at that point and plow the snow from our farmyard and start to get ready for that postponed winter share. I, on the other hand, was loaded into an ambulance and driven away all by myself to this hospital. When I arrived, the doctors came and asked me all sorts of questions, like, why are you here and what brought you here? What's going on? They sent specialists down from the NICU to tell me survival statistics and ask what kind of emergency procedures did we want them to undertake if this baby did indeed enter the world? I was under no condition to answer any questions of this importance. I could barely focus my eyes as I called my husband Max and said, this is really bad. You need to get up here right away. Things did calm down, but the next day, my water broke, and I was admitted to inpatient on bed rest for 14 weeks. Max never left my side again. He set up the farm command center next to my bedside in my hospital room. He would call home trying to find people to feed our cows. Sometimes neighbors we hadn't even met before stepped up. He would talk with my assistant manager and they would figure out what needed to be done on the farm and she would take care of it. He even sat up next to me writing the crop plan for the year and ordering supplies and seeds. My job was to hold that baby in. Every four hours around the clock, the doctors and nurses would come in and put me on the baby monitor just to make sure things were going along all right in there. Other than that, it started to feel pretty normal. We would watch shows and listen to podcasts and read books. My husband would go get pizza from the cafeteria and we would watch the snows fly over the hospital parking lot. It actually was a pretty relaxing vacation, I have to say. <laughs> but that didn't last forever. At 26 weeks, during one of those monitoring sessions, the doctors rushed in. This baby is under duress. It needs to come out now. So that was that. I was rolled off to delivery, and at 12 noon, Shepard entered the world. Max said he was just like a farmer, coming along at lunchtime so he didn't disrupt the workday, and even better, in the off-season. They wheeled him off 
or he, they actually scurried him off to the NICU to get him all set. And then a few hours later, I was also wheeled into the NICU to meet this very tiny baby. He was one pound, 14 ounces. You could hold him in your hands. I was completely numb. I remember thinking, will this baby die? How will I love him? Why do I have to do this? I don't think this is what Jane meant when she said it's going to be a tough year. A few days later, I was discharged from the hospital. Spring was in the air, and it was just about time to start our greenhouses. So we got to work. We became farmers during the day and NICU parents at night. On the farm, we started preparing the soils, harrowing and plowing and getting ready to plant. At the NICU, we were learning about blood oxygen saturation rates and what did all of these alarms on these monitors mean and how do we held our baby skin to skin and changed his diapers that were no bigger than the palm of your hand. Back on the farm, things did start to grow. It was a dry spring, so we got out our irrigation and started that up, and we were battling an insane cutworm population. The soil became so ingrained in our hands that even after we did the required three-minute scrub before we would see shepherd every time, it wouldn't come out. And we estimated that we spent over 10 hours scrubbing our hands during his time in the NICU. Eventually, Shepard also grew. He learned how to nurse, how to breathe on his own without support, how to bottle feed, and after 112 days, he was released from the NICU on the summer solstice. The first thing we did was take him to the field to meet the cows. Now Shepard is seven, he's about this tall, he loves Legos, he loves drawing. Sometimes he'll help out on the farm. And you would never guess that he came into the world so early. Thank you. Cisa is so honored to bring you these stories about local food and our culture. If you'd like to learn more about Cisa's work in our programs, please go to buylocalfood.com dot org. Thank you.